Now, viewers will remember that uh, a couple of weeks ago we had a guest here with us um, who made a beautiful film on the Guerra and spoke to the lady, one of the very last residents of the Guerra before it was flooded. You will remember Rob Bradstock. Rob, of course, is a filmmaker and we did promise you that he would return again. He did promise us that he would return again and I'm very glad to say he's here with us now. So you're very welcome back to local television. Thank you. Again, congratulations on your film on the Greer. It was beautiful. Great. Beautiful, Thank you. Thank you very beautiful much. film and uh, some great reaction from it. Yes. So you, you've very kindly given us another now, which you made a couple of years ago, in fact in 2009. Tell me about this one. Well, um, this film came about because a friend of mine, Joe Wolf, local singer-songwriter, um, has a res residency in the uh, Anna Cultura in Balavorni. He was going to be there for three months. And um, part of the project was that he was going to write uh, new songs in Irish. Um, and he was going to talk to local people to try and get local stories and get inspiration that way. So, um, as he's a friend of mine, I, 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 I thought this project sounded very interesting. So um, I began to film, and uh, wasn't we weren't sure exa exactly what where we were going to begin with, but uh, it, it turned out that um, he uh, had decided he was going to write one of the songs about uh, Saint Godnet, and um, to illustrate this, we sort of went on a little journey. Uh, we went to Church Cross in um, Clondorhead, and then we went to Kilgobnaton, and then we went to the the church in. Uh, in, uh, in Balavorni. So this illustrates the film and his, his sort of quest to, to try and find an idea uh, to write okay. about St. Godnet. Mm -hmm. And this is basically what the film is about. It's just a little snapshot of a very... Uh, of the creative process of how songs are written. You see him thinking about um, uh, the words and the ideas and it's 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 just an insight into into Joe Wolf that focuses yeah. on on St Godnet. It's a, it's a, essentially you're in search of inspiration. Absolutely. Isn't it? Yes. yes. Now I've had a preview of this and I know that the film is in Irish. Yes. As such. Yes. But uh, viewers who don't speak the language don't have to despair. No, they don't because there are subtitles and they're pretty clear subtitles and, and I, I'm sure that people have enough Irish to, to get whatever they, they miss uh, from the subtitles anyhow. Yes. I myself I didn't I don't speak very much Irish at all, in fact virtually none, so it was quite a challenging project for me um, to, to make a, a film in a language I didn't speak too well. Um, but it, I enjoyed the, the challenge and I actually did learn quite a bit of Irish having for, heard uh, the interviews and the translations Excellent. quite a few times while I was editing. So. Um, yeah, it was it was a highly enjoyable uh, project. Okay, so can can we just broaden out your filmmaking experience again for a moment, and we'll come back again to 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 the one we're about to show. Um, you, you've made I, I think we mentioned last time round <coughs> round that besides the Guerra, you've also made a film on the Tibetan immig Im immigrants. Well, it's to, it's Tibetans living in exile. Yes. Um, it was my first project. It was actually a, a, a feature-length documentary. I, I mean, it was very... I mean, we're looking back on it, it was quite um, ambitious mm -hmm. for me to start making that, but it was something that I knew a lot about. Uh, I originally had made a, a documentary uh, for RTE Radio 1 uh, back in 1996 about the uh, Tibetans living in exile. And, um, you know, I'd originally become very interested in that whole subject because I happened to be in Dharamsala where the Dalai Lama lives uh, in India on the day he won the Nobel Peace Prize so he came back in the car and I saw all of these uh, Tibetans uh, waiting for him and the adoration that they have for him so I became very interested in the uh, Tibetans living in exile so after the radio program uh, I thought well it's good to make a film about something about what you know so I went back to India and uh, over a period of about three years made this, this feature-length documentary which uh, eventually premiered in 2007 in uh, the Kerry Film Festival. Yeah, yes, I, I suppose um, just just on the Dalai Lama, he's a, he's a, I know he's due to visit Ireland in April mm -hmm. um, and just for the viewers maybe you could just, who may not be very familiar, can you just say who the Dalai Lama is? 
Well, the, the Dalai Lama is he's a very interesting person because he's the spiritual and also political leader of all Tibetans, whether they be in Tibet, which is under Chinese occupation, has been for uh, since the early 1950s. Um, but he's also, uh, well, as I say, he's a spiritual and political leader. And I mean, in recent years, he has been uh, traveling throughout the world, not only spreading his spiritual uh, message, which is a message of compassion, love, forgiveness, and the basic premises of, 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 uh, premise of, of Buddhism, but he's also been um, letting people become more aware of the situation in Tibet, and he, his, one of his great wishes is that he would be able to return to a totally free Tibet uh, within his lifetime. But obviously over the years it's been quite complicated and there have been compromises made with the Chinese. So yes. um, it's quite a complicated thing, but anyhow, he's been to Ireland. I think this is his third, will be his third visit to uh, the south of Ireland. He's been to the north several times recently. Mm -hmm. He's being invited by um, a man called Richard Moore who runs uh, a charity called um, <coughs> Children in Crossfire in combination with two other charities whose names I've sorry, forgotten. Mm -hmm. um, but he's coming for um, two or three days uh, in the middle of April mm -hmm. and um, I'm hoping to be there in one capacity or other, I'm not quite okay. sure what yet. Just yet, okay. Yeah, yeah and I, I, think, um, I think the respect um, with which he is held is unanimous across all religions and across all peoples. Everybody seems to love the Dalai Lama. Yes, well, I mean, he's extraordinary in a person that even though he is a spiritual and religious leader, he is practicing intolerance and understanding and he will embrace any religious belief. He says it's not necessary for you to change your religion, mm -hmm. stay with the religion that you believe in, but, you know, as long as you're practicing compassion, forgiveness, understanding, mm -hmm. and, you know, a, a respect for all humanity, mm -hmm. uh, and trying to live as good a life as possible, then you're doing the right thing. Okay. So he's, he's a wonderful person. I've met him several times, and uh, I mean, whenever you meet him, he's just extraordinary, and I'm, I'm hoping I'll get a chance uh, when he's in Ireland. To see him later this time around. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So now let's go back to <coughs> somebody who was compassionate and loving and understanding <laughs> and forgiving too. And that, I suppose, is St. Abby in our own tradition. Now, I know um, St. Abby's Day is coming up on the 11th. And you, in this film, you, you spend some time in really Gobnaton and Bellavorne yes. um, filming with Jar there. Did Jar find an inspiration there? Did, did you ever find out afterwards? I, I think that he did. Um, I think the song is still, he's still working on this particular song. He worked on quite a few other songs, but I think he did. I, I mean, I found, what I found so amazing was that I've lived in, you know, this part of Ireland for 30 odd years. I never knew about Kilgobnet and, and I never knew about Church Cross. I didn't know about the various little stones and all the various little relics that are left around from St. Gobnet. And I mean, you always hear about her as, as being such an important um, religious fi figure in this area. Mm -hmm. And what I found interesting, when I showed the film down in Bandon, which isn't that far away, I was amazed at how few people actually knew anything about St. Gobnet at all. Mm -hmm. So when we were doing this this uh, filming, when Jer was exploring the whole thing, I found out quite a lot about her, and she so sounded like a really extraordinary person mm -hmm. who'd been on a also a spiritual journey, mm -hmm. uh, looking for this place to set up her... Her, her center back in those days and this whole thing of the vision of the various nine deer and all of the symbols and stuff I found really really interesting and so it was, it was, it was really great okay uh, that's great so Robert we look forward to um, screening that film now and um, that will be going out to you as I say quite um, on Wednesday and this Wednesday I think we will do that danger and um, it will uh, show some lovely footage, as Rob told us, uh, centred around the life of St. Abbey.